We do have a theist on the line. Yay. It is David in Louisiana who wants to talk about the Canaanites and God's wrath. Go ahead. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, well, uh, yeah, I know this is a common, uh, you know, atheist Christian apologetic talking point, the Canaanites and or God's wrath. Uh, but I think the Canaanites is like a really good example uh, of God's wrath. And I feel like this talking point is really uh, misre- misrepresented by the atheist side. Why? Okay. Uh, well, uh, first of all, you know, the, the a lot of atheists, I don't think they, like, read the passage in full. And if they did, they didn't understand the context of the situation. Uh, they, they're just kind of upset that, you know, the Bible called for, like, you know, I guess you could call it a genocide or whatever. But it's really God's it wrath genocide. because, okay, but... uh the Canaanites, a lot of people don't know that, that that group of people, they would sacrifice their children and they would play the drums so yeah, loud. What's your that evidence the for that claim? Hear the children burning. What's your, what's your evidence for it, that claim? Well, it's not in the Bible, but I mean, the descendants are. It's like, not in the Bible and it's in, not like, generally accepted history. It's, it's also not generally accepted history as well. So, again, what is your I evidence mean, for your claim? It's grounded in historical facts. Is it? Well, that these can you, people can you justify that? Children. I mean, uh, well, yeah, people all yeah, over the world have sacrificed children for all kinds of things. But to say that, that the Canaanites were doing it at that time, that's a, that's a very specific claim. Can you justify the claim? Well, I don't have uh, sources offhand, but I, I mean, it's just common knowledge should... that that group of people no, it's not. in that area, in fact, not just and... the Canaanites, but the Philistines as well. Basically, all in, the in fact, I can. I, in fact, the 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 historians that I have read all disagree with that. That was not something that the, was in common Canaanite practice at the time. So that's not the issue. Um, and also, you've got another problem in that if God is all powerful, He didn't have to have the Israelites try attempt to commit and fail because they failed to to uh, commit uh, genocide against the Canaanites because they were still around. He tried several times. Um, so you got to pick which one you're looking at. Um, but you, if he is all powerful, then he had another way to do it. He had another way to stop that from happening and he chose not to do it that way. He chose the worst way to do it, which is war and genocide. He didn't have to um, because he's omnipotent, right? He's got other choices that we don't have as humans because we're not omnipotent and he is. The second problem that you have is that the Israelites are in fact Canaanites. We can trace uh, through archeology, span we can trace their history back to Canaan. They were in fact Canaanites. Um, so they were just a, a, a small group or small rural group in the, in the hills. Uh, so you've got all these problems with what you're talking about uh, in terms of, of Canaanites. And it sounds to me like you're the one who doesn't actually understand the passage and the contextual history of the passage outside of what's in the Bible. That's incorrect. Uh, Yeah, I understand that Abraham, the first Jew, was from the land of Canaan. Now, that doesn't make him a Canaanite because what only the archaeological evidence disagrees with you. The the archaeological evidence disagrees with you. But this is where the woke anti-Semitism comes in because I'm not being anti-Semite at all with by, Jews, by pointing out that these yeah, are you are, you are. Because no, because there's where nothing any- <laughs> is the God. What, You're so ridiculous. David, no. David, 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 David. I'm 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 going to get off this kind of silly anti-Semitism run that you're on at the moment, because you said something earlier that kind of really, it, it kind of piqued me ears, and it was just a split second thing. But you said all of the people who God was kind of put his vengeance on were sacrificing babies. Uh, do you think that's true of the Midianites? Listen, the, <clears throat> no, it's not true of all of God's enemies, but my point is, is that God makes them as his enemies in the Old Testament for a reason, and 
the Old Testament was fit specifically for those Bronze Age people, a time of rape and pillaging and such and such. The Israelites were actually the most moral David. group of people that David. you can find. Uh, in David. Yeah, again, David. You, don't, you need to go study history because most of the, the Israelite laws were no different than the laws of those uh, surrounding people with regard to slaves and where you could take them um, to, to enslaving their own people. Um, all those laws are fairly common throughout all of that. So to say that they're more moral is, is just not to understand the true contextual history of the Middle East at that time. It's just your your ignorance on the topic is astounding. And you should also take a, a, a history of that area from a secular source and actually find out what was going on at the time. You'll see just how ridiculous you're being. Or even a religious source, which is an actual scholar rather than just uh, some crazy person who's... Well, yeah, a scholar who hasn't signed a, a statement of faith. A scholar who hasn't signed a statement of faith, yeah. Because if they sign the statement of faith, then they, they will not look at, at the fact that the Israelites started off as Canaanites and were Canaanites, um, that the God you worship is, is actually a minor God in that pantheon. Um, you'll ignore all of that. Uh, oh. You'll ignore the references to uh, uh, multiple gods in, in the Old Testament even. So all of this stuff is stuff that you're going to ignore simply because you've chosen you started from from a, a conclusion and worked your way backwards and if you work if you start with all the facts not just the ones in the bible but the ones outside the bible and you look at the canaanite pantheon and you look at who all the gods were and you look at what other uh myths were saying about those gods uh the, the, then you'd realize where exactly the monotheism came out of uh the polytheistic canaanites um and those are just simple facts so you can look at all that, and I would suggest that uh, you no, really sir, no, go sir. and do that. I, I always think we look at your secular history because it's proven in schools and colleges, which was started by the church, as well as science started by the church. It's all been uh, That has in. nothing to do with what I just what, said. What has been proven you're, you're in schools You're a complete non-sequitur. That's a complete non-sequitur. It has nothing to do with what I just said. What the history of the David? time does not support the Bible conclusions. The history of the time is of Israelites coming from Canaanites, of Israelites being polytheistic at one time and now being, and then turned into a monotheistic religion. Those are the facts. It has nothing to do with what you just said. Actually, th this whole idea of that the Israelites had a pantheon of gods has been debunked plenty of times. And this no, idea it hasn't. That David, no, David. No, that's the problem. David, it that, hasn't. Yeah. Not, not, it, the, the consensus of scholars, including Christian believing scholars, know that this is the case. They know there was a pantheon of gods. There, there's many, many journal articles written on the subject. Uh, you know, there's there's so much information out there which demonstrates this to be the case. Uh, no serious scholar dismisses this. And uh, even those good scholars who don't accept it, and this is a mark of a good scholar, by the way, even those good scholars who don't accept it will openly admit that they are in the minority. They won't lie and say, well, you know, most people believe this. They lack knowledge that they are in the minority. And that is the mark of a good scholar, uh, regardless of whether you agree with what they say or not. But the fact is that the majority of scholar scholarship points to the fact that there were lots of deities. There are lots of different tribal groups. They shared a lot of the deities. And, and what you call the Christian God, there are many, many papers written on this very subject that state that he is either an amalgamation of, uh, of Yahweh and El or an amalgamation of Yahweh, El and uh, Baal. This is, this is well known. It's well understood in scholarship. So you, you're just coming out with nonsense at this point, saying that that's not the case. It may be your belief. But it is not packed, backed up by scholarship, and it is not the understood position in scholarship. You are simply wrong on this point. To trust your 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 secular education, when it's shown time and time and again, you know, just it can't. David, David, questions. stop right there. And David, stop. You David, stop. My degree is in religion, philosophy, and ethics. In the religion portion. Of that degree, virtually 
every professor I have was a religious believing person. I did not come from a secular uh, background. I have professors who are religious. I have professors who believe that God exists. And guess what they teach? Do you think they teach that? Here's, here's a question for you. Do you think that in, in colleges where they're teaching about these things, do you think that they teach that God sprung up on his own and was not amalgamated with other gods? Or do you think that they teach that God is an amalgamation of other God characters from other tribal groups? Which, which one of those things do you think are actually taught in colleges? Tyson Rice, like Enemies of the West. <laughs> to what? Did you just say Enemies of the West? Did you just say Enemies of the West? That's what I thought I heard you say, but I may not have heard that. I think he oh, he, he I hung think up. He's he's yeah, he, he did hang up. I'm looking at Colin's video. Yeah, we, he hung up. Um, wow. What, what a call. <laughs> Um, accusing us of being anti-Semitic when we're just stating, I mean, there's nothing anti-Semitic to say that these that Israelites started off as Canaanites. Nothing anti-Semitic about that. Do you know what? Um, I actually, I'm quite glad we got that call, Jim, because when I was advertising this show in the Facebook groups earlier on, I actually wrote, if you are a believing person and you, you, you know, you think that um, uh, you you're on the fence. You're a believing person and you're on the fence. Come and listen to the show because you will hear arguments that will convince you that religious arguments aren't good. It's callers like the last caller, which do our job for us because we people, the amount of comments we get saying, you, you know, you just, you just get these people from like the, the bottom of the barrel to call in and make religion look bad. No, these are the people who choose in. To present their arguments. If you think you can do better, if you think you are an apologist, who, who, like a practicing apologist who thinks you can do better than that, give us a call because we, we're not picking these people. They're calling us off their own back, you know, yep. and, you know, they're yeah. making religion look bad. <laughs> I mean, there's yeah. no other way about it. They're making it look worse than it is, uh, it, which it, is... <laughs> the problem, I think, the real problem is, is that professional apologists don't do much better. <laughs> no, <they don't. laughs> I mean, they're better on the philosophical points. They're sharper on a lot of different uh, areas, but their arguments don't vary that much. They're not that different from what what our callers are doing. So our callers shouldn't feel bad that they're getting beat up on this program because uh, their uh, apologist heroes, if they have any, uh, would fare the same way because they got the same problems. I, I want to point these. out as well the difference between RAO who called earlier and, you know, you know, said it kind of recognized that it was stuck in a, a bit of a rut and, and that his position may be wrong. And that last caller who kind of rage quit <laughs> because it was just, you know, I asked him a simple question, which was so blatantly obvious that it what uh, the answer he was going to give was wrong. Yeah, it, it, It's painful. It really, really is. 